Man, Monday night comes quick. Every week. It's <laughs> it's like a half an hour and we got to do the show again. I, I yep. know. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Hey, we're Power and Speed, 908-751-0211, as if. And if you haven't yet, like us on Facebook and iTunes. Yeah, I'd, I'd like the iTunes people to rate a little more. I think yeah. we got to get on Instagram because, you know, from what I hear, Facebook just, nobody goes on anymore. What? I mean, we got a zillion friggin', you know, uh, people downloading this thing and we got like seven likes on Facebook. I don't uh, think it, my kids tell me that nobody goes on anymore. Really? I mean, we do. And what are they going? Because we're old. I've ne- <laughs> Instagram. Well, speak Instagram. for yourself. I, You're fucking old too. I know, but I I didn't get on the Facebook thing until this. <laughs> the all face, this the how did you find the Facebook? <laughs> using the, the Facebook Google? Thing. Yeah, using the Google. <laughs> now, the only reason that I the, yeah, like I'm not the technology guy in the room. the The only reason I even bothered doing any of that was because of this. I know. I wouldn't done it. I know. I, you wouldn't. I wasn't on there forever. Everybody That's said, true. "Yeah, yeah." Oh, by the way, we got Fireman Jeff here. If you're wondering who the other voice is, yeah, howdy. Um. I always, you know, stayed away from it because if I didn't talk to you before, I don't want to talk to you now. True, true. And I feel guilty. Like, well, you had that other thing that you were doing with Facebook too. What? No, we're not going to talk about that. I was. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to remind me. <laughs> I, I will. I've done a lot of fucked up stuff. Anti-social networking? I know. Probably. Probably. No, no, no. Well, you know, the the first thing I want to get out it of the way. Fa- it was a family thing. Go ahead. A family thing. Yeah, my family. Jackass. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you're lucky it didn't turn out you're the one who fucked that up. Uh, that was a good one. Um, the the one thing I, w- I want to say to everybody out there listening, um, you know, the Drag Weaker guys said that everything, all the people are fantastic. The camaraderie, everything about it is fantastic. Yep. And I got to tell you, hands down, got to be the truth. Because I have had more people reach out to me to offer to help if I'm going to do it and what do you need? Is there anything you need to know? I mean, I've talked to Jason. I've talked to James. I've talked, I mean, all absolutely fantastic people. They're good dudes. Very good dudes. No doubt. Very, they, they are core hot rod guys. I mean, that's what they, that's what they do. Yep. And what great people. So, I'm, I mean, that's probably the best thing that's come out of this is the amount of people that I can like just think that we, we talked that I would have never met before. Sure. It's pretty sure. cool. So I say we found our niche. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I, you know, it's funny because people like the tech shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the Drag Week thing was huge. Well, the Drag Week thing is the best thing, so it would be nice to be a tech show on Drag Week, but it's only once a year, so. Well, today we will have JC mm-hmm. from ATI, and this, because of the Drag Week thing, there's actually a whole sequence of questions and even people asking things. Yep. Like, what does it take to survive? Yep. What do you, you know, I mean, it's, it's there's this is going to be a good one. We talked to him previously about dampers, which was an amazing show. Yep. Anybody that's got any technical questions about dampers should certainly go back and listen to that. And then we got into converters. And every time we talked to him, it was like, well, yeah, this time we'll do transes and converters. Never got that far. Yeah. yeah. So, I know. I know. And, you know, a, a Facebook listener wrote in, I saw it today, wanted to know about the 400, Turbo 400 yeah. cases. So, yep. All stuff right up their alley, man. And not to mention, we got to talk to him about our, um, possible drag week deal yeah for next year yeah so but maybe he'll be able to help us with that i i can't understand well we'll leave it for him i can't understand how certain stuff just doesn't live me neither but you know uh, i'm sure they know better than i do tad you got anything <laughs> i i thought <laughs> i did my wording already so yeah, well he, he, he did his party he, 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 he did his thing off you like that nobody home look in his eye yeah well no wait who's looking what eye? So, yeah i know i know i know mine black what <laughs> come on man <laughs> All right, I can't even look at Mike's, you. Mike's possessed. That's not even everybody's wondering what we're talking about because he's got black freaking. I have black in. contacts in. He did it, it to, to freak us out because he's, yeah, he's crazy. It wasn't for you. I was freaking out everybody all day everywhere I went. He looks like a crow. Like so. I had my sunglasses on and pull them down. Be like what? And people are like, <laughs> you can see them look visibly shaken. It you know, was pretty cool. You should yeah. have gone to Chick Fil A like that. I did. That would, oh, I did. You did. I did. I went to Chick Fil A like that. Oh, they, right. They're not normally shaken by you in the first place, but no. No, I, I think I'm not even going to, don't even start. Look, you should just be <laughs> quiet. You've managed to turn your device off. So we're in good uh, shape. Whatever. Um, real quick, we'll talk about the the SRT guy. I got a little more information. Mm-hmm. You got a little more information. This mm-hmm. is the guy that was turbocharged D85. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have told the guy to go to 12 to 1. You said no. I did. <laughs> okay. So now we further confused the guy. Well, I mean, you know, I said uh, stay 
at 11 to 1 or a little bit less. He's going to pick up a lot just going to 11 to 1. But, you know, 12 to 1, it's all a function of, of how good the cylinder heads are at that point. And I can't believe, based on what I've heard, um, everybody says the SRT head is just not very good, not very efficient. So, Well, he could make a boatload of boost with that anyway, could he? Sure, he could. What did he say he made? Well, uh, you, you were teasing about uh, the little turbo or some shit. Uh, well, yeah, but, but yeah, it's not always boost, though. I mean, you know, it's it's pounds per per hour, right? What? It's the flow of the turbo. I mean, he's got sure. a he's got a forty nine pound turbo. He can only make a certain amount of power. So, um, the, the boost number is the is going to be what the boost number is. Well, they don't they have the exhaust manifold has the turbine housing cast into it, and so you can't you don't have much Dude, choice. I have, I have no idea. I have no it's idea. It's an SRT four. We're not yeah, SRT they, guys. They're the exhaust manifold has the housing kind of like, the, like the echo boost ford Possibly, only, I don't know only, only it can't be anywhere near as good because it's from 19 oh by the know, way whatever. uh richie had to trade in his eco boost ford already because the turbos went so he got rid of it see now that this thank thank you todd for yeah. just throwing uh, richie like yeah, all richie. The, the listening audience knows richie, richie. And- i don't even know who richie is I, this is listen <laughs> people listening this is tad <sighs> I have no fucking idea. Isn't Richie, Richie friends is. with sport? A pro- no. I don't, maybe. <laughs> no, he's more friends with Mike because Mike has all his powder coating gun- done through him. Oh, Richie the powder coated. Yeah. There's from Extreme Power Coating, one of our buddies. Oh, he got rid of his F-150 because it started chewing up turbos already. Okay. He hasn't had it long. Thank you for that, Todd. Anyway. Ranty Ford. Dick yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks, Pat. Um, so, okay. I mean, uh, th- uh, I would have thought a little more because it's 85. Um, thinking along the lines of methanol, thinking about what other people have said they've managed to use, mm-hmm. but- I mean, in the end, I, I don't think that's going to be the make or break or how, how well the thing runs anyway. Agreed. So it, it's a minimal part. Yep. And another listener wrote in about a 5.3, you know, exactly what, what Jason did, mm-hmm. and he wanted to know what to do. And I said, that's kind of funny because Tom and I are talking about that right now. Yep. Um, bottom line is, I don't think you should go crazy with it if you're trying to do it on a budget. I mean, look what Jason accomplished. And, you know, Jason never got into it unless I didn't ask him, but that was a used motor. Yeah. Like, did it have yeah. 60,000 miles or 100,000 miles on it beforehand? He said it was unknown, so. Yeah. So he he took the thing apart, gapped it, put it back together, and t- competed in a ton of different things with it. Flying. Flying. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And it's fine. So. Tom and I have been going back and forth because we would like to do something like this. I, I think out of everything that I wanted to do with a streetcar, that to me is kind of out the window because the drag week thing is a purpose. I like having a purpose. Anybody could build a streetcar and drive around. This is a purpose. So you it, mean a street squirrel? Yes, Ted. Come on. You sure you don't want to be quiet? Because I mean, I'm, I'm on, starting to Ralph's regret. Thing, wasn't it? You know, my dad used to say that. You got a plate on your car. You're a street squirrel. I do have a mute button for him, you know that. I know, we might have to use it today. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Tom and I have been talking, <laughs> and you take- <laughs> The Ninja's that online. That it's a 5.3, um, and I guess the six liter block is very similar, and you wanted to know about making it 3905, so you could put a different cylinder head on. Yep. Uh, you know, look, the only thing I'd want to do is probably make it structurally sound. All right. Well, you know, I was thinking of it because obviously we have a little more resource than most people. That's the only thing I was saying. True. And it, that is funny. Our guys are, are funny. Why? I, I love our listeners. Which because one? They're just funny. I mean, they're, Tad's at his word count already. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> can, can push the mute, mute button on them. Um, did you see the one about the 14 automotive students? No. Oh, well, let's give a uh, shout out to uh, 14 automotive students listening tonight, uh, Northern Virginia Community College. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. I don't care what they say about community college. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. My kid did two years of community college. Absolutely. And now he's going to, you know, regular university. And he's doing, that's all good. And 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 you know you, what? God well, bless those kids too, because you know what's going to happen? They're not going to be idiots. They're not going to get stuck on the side of the road waiting for triple A to change your tire. I know because they know. they like don't know what this foreign object is called a lug wrench in the manual. And yeah. they're not going to be broke from going to some friggin' four year school and paying a zillion dollars. Yeah, paying some idiot to put eight hundred dollars worth of brakes on your car. Just so, you know, good job, everybody, guys. man up. That's good job, Virginia say. Community College guys, and uh, like us on Facebook. And there's no excuse for you guys not to because college people all know what facebook is even if you hate it so we better get 14 new likes today do you know that all the college people are on there 
You sure? No, I'm not. But I'm. I'm but I, they can all sign up today. They're okay. probably on Instagram. <laughs> uh, but isn't Instagram just pictures? Dude, I don't know. But that's where everybody, like in Dubai, that's what they all have. The, 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 this one guy, top sportsman guy, he's got 37,000 followers. And he's got a to- top sportsman car. I, I, I know. I, I, Tad, I honestly, one yes. of the things you were supposed to be was a social media guy. Oh, God. That, that is one of your yeah. things that you were supposed to do because uh, I don't know shit about did you, it. Did you hear me doing this? That was the beginning of fail. Yeah. <laughs> So on Instagrammer, Tad, please look at some of this stuff and say, yeah. all right. So back to the 5.3 thing, like you were talking about going up in cylinder head and, you know, getting a real cylinder head on it. And the only thing I would fall back to is you're look, cheap. Well, it's not about cheap, but if you, <laughs> look, the, let's forget for a minute that, you know, the budget that you're talking about when these things, if you're, if you're trying to do it on a budget, I really don't think the 5.3 needs much of nothing. After what Jason and others have done. I, I would agree. I mean, for us, we look at it, it's like, well, put a crank in it. You know, what? what's a comfortable stroke? Keep the ring stack good. You know, compression distance. Because well, we can. Because we can. Well, because we can is why we should. <sighs> I hear you. We don't have to go 905. If you want to try it at, at 800, that's fine. I think 800. Well, look, because the other thing I don't want to do is we know that for whatever. Here, let's go back a few steps. We know that GM is not stupid, right? Right. They, they absolutely have more research and design and thought into any, what we idiots around here could ever possibly Abs- come up. Absolutely. With. What do you think those guys would say if you said, hey, GM engineer group, hopefully the guys that designed the Camaro are mm-hmm. off in the corner. Yeah, right. <laughs> you mean the body. <laughs> yeah, the body. Yeah. Um, we have this 5.3 truck motor. Yeah. Um, we'd like to put two turbos on it and give it 25 pounds of boost. And all we're going to do is lighten up the ring gaps and put some valve spring in a little bit of camshaft. How mm-hmm. long do you think it'll last? They're like 30 seconds. Right. There is no way they anticipated this. No. Now I'm not saying that there's any magic, you know, it, it's not magic that it stays together, but take the structural integrity of how thick that bore is, mm-hmm. how the case works. Mm-hmm. Maybe that leads to head gasket stability. Maybe it leads to main web stability. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I agree with all of it. So that. to me, I don't want to, I don't want to fix something that ain't broke. Mm-hmm. Just my thought. Well, there's a lot of stuff out there at 3905 that's fine, too. The reason Jason's shit didn't blow up is probably a lot because of Jason and whoever he has tuned in the thing. Yeah. I, I mean, there's. I, I'll argue with anybody. I mean, a tuner can blow something up as fast as he could, you know, keep it alive. Sure, a good tuner. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, okay. you know, uh, uh, that's just my opinion. I agree. But, but I, uh, listen, we'll do it at 3,800 and we'll, we'll have at it. You know, one of the things that Phil told me was, um, some of those head castings are suspect. So we're going to have to make sure we know what kind of heads come with these things. And oh, what on the 5.3? Yeah. Some of them aren't great. Did you ask him if there's any measurable benefit in power to, to making the head a little better? I mean, do they really yeah. pick up substantially? Yeah. He says they do. Even- and, and he also agrees that if you make something better NA. It is going to be better. I agree. Now, it's probably marginal going up. It's, you know, the curve isn't, it's not linear. You know, by the time you get into probably the 20, the 20 pound number, it probably gets less and less, but it's all, you know, the area under the curve that you pick up, you know, in average power makes the car go down track faster. So, you know what happens? I, I fall back to the discussion I had with Anthony when he was telling me about some of the stuff he was using. I'm I'm like, like, dude, I was like. (laughs) Dude, that, that's the kind of ring you're using? I mean, you can put a much better ring in than that. And he goes, and it, you pick up 20. And he goes, you realize what you just said? Well, yeah, for him. Yeah. Yeah, 20 is So, I mean, what, I, what I'm saying is if you m- make the heads a little better, I would just want to take as yeah, much but window tw- area. 20, yeah, but 20 to him yeah. is different than 20 to us. Well, yeah, because, but at that point, he was probably making 2,000 or 2,500. And uh, Yeah, and we got to go 850. So, the thing's still got to make 1,500. We're we're marginal right now with all the things we've been talking about with the weight and everything. We're we're marginal. I'd like <laughs> fucking car. I'd rather go eight twenty, and then turn it down. Me too. So well, you don't want to be you don't want to be have to run it on kill all the time, right? But you know what the real problem is with this is it's transmission stuff. <laughs> we got to ask somebody about transmission. We got to ask somebody. Wait, if only somebody would call. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll we got JC. Here. Let's bring JC in. JC, hey, what's hey, up? Howdy. Hey. How's everybody doing tonight? Pretty good. Hey, thanks for coming back, man. We appreciate it. Uh, the listeners appreciate it. They they're pretty lined up, pretty heavy to listen to you. So uh, questions and all. Yeah, no, we just gotta do the same thing we did the first two because they were very highly uh, 
uh, downloaded shows. Very awesome. Well, it's, uh, you know, I'm lucky. I enjoy my job. So I enjoy talking about what I do and, and, uh, always, always happy to do it. Cool. Well, Mike's got some stuff right off the bat that he's got to ask you. So, uh, have at it there sport. Well, well, I mean, let's, uh, let's start here and this is going to be a little self-serving, but I'm, (laughs) I've been accused of being good at that before. Um, four L 60 style transits. Mm-hmm. Um, capable of a uh, 1,000 horsepower at, you know, a 1,000 wheel, if people want to talk all about wheel. Now, I'm not a wheel guy. I always knew about dyno horsepower um, in a car that's, say, 3,500 pounds. Ever last or not a chance? Uh, yeah, you can make it last. And, uh, you know, wheel horsepower is a bit deceiving. You can, um, you know, we have guys that love to talk about it, and you can change it by 200 horsepower with a torque converter if you want to. So, you know, a thousand at the tire, let's say is, is really maybe 1120 or somewhere in there with, with the right stuff. And a lot of it comes down to how you drive it. You know what, if you're a dumbass and you drive it like that, then you're going to, that's, it's not going to last as long. But if you get a little bit of education about how it works and what it does, then you can, you can make it live a lot longer. Um, you know, trans brake and depending how big the engine is and how much torque it has and then how little rear gear you actually have. So you can cruise it, you know, 1400 RPM, all that, all that kind of works hand in hand. You know, the more, mechanical advantage you have with rear gear and tire the easier it is on the parts um the less torque you have the more horsepower of course the easier it is as well you know weight being the same so the the 4l60 it, it doesn't really come up for us too much we we start with the 4l65 and the 4l70 the 4l70 kind of replaced the 65 and uh, sonics makes a lot of great parts for it we make some as well and uh I mean, we we have some guys that they're not a thousand horsepower. They're you know, let's say seven fifty, but they drive it. They drive it hard, and it, it lives pretty well. When when you get into trans brake stuff and uh, you know, not a lot of rear gear, then then it's hard on it's hard on everything, and it's uh, it's not going to be you know, it's not going to be a hundred thousand mile unit for right. sure. Right, right. Uh, it, it's it, it can be built. You know, the best parts available make it. So let's say you spend all the money on a 4L70, everything you can possibly throw at it to make it strong, it makes it uh, a fairly, it makes it as strong as a fairly cheap turbo 400. Yeah. And then that's where you get into stuff. Then you get into 4L80s and everything else. Yeah. The the, the 4L, the 4L80, so we haven't really pushed hard on that stuff and for, for a few different reasons, uh, time, people, space, but um we have a new building that that the space problem will be alleviated if uh if we can find the people we'll find the time but uh i i really i'll have something at sema and we haven't really press released it other than a, a little instagram photo but uh like a 4l85 that that will have you know rated somewhere around 2000 horsepower with a 210 low gear and uh bolt on sfi bell and all the all the fun stuff with it so that's that's kind of where where that transmission's going. The, the the 65 and the 70. I mean, at the end of the day, you're you're limited with the physical size of everything. See, that's a, we actually jumped into this from that point because what I wanted to actually talk about was transmission design and where do things like like what is the gauge of how things will work and how modifiable how modifiable they are. Um, obviously we know power glides have been used extensively in a lot of different applications. Um, everybody always rated the 400, a stronger trans. Um, but is this just come, come down to a sheer size of what the transmission case can handle? I mean, from input shafts, planetary, so on and so on, all the way down the line. Right. Um, so, you know, you t- two extremes, you take the, the power glide and then the 400 when they're both built to their maxes, they, they can hold the same same amount of horsepower, somewhere around 4,000 horsepower. And, you know, in, in a, a drag car, you know, 20, 2,450 pounds, things like that. So a, a lot of the stuff, when you're talking 4L60, you know, you're 
you're somewhat limited because everything inside of it to begin life was designed to be as light and as cheap as it could possibly be made. So you have to start changing every single piece of it, just like you do with the Glide and the 400, to to be able to put the horsepower numbers in front of it. So, I mean, you can literally buy a Turbo 400 lock up with a big intermediate shaft, um, you know, the lock up bolt together converter we do. And we're talking about a $20,000 transmission. Oh my God. When it's said and done, it's, uh, believe me, it, it's astounds me when I say it, but, um, I can also tell you we're not getting rich off of those things. It's, uh, there is a lot of material and engineering and time inside of that thing. And, nothing nothing's oem i mean i have every single part of that transmission's made new now i mean right to, to the park pole the park pin the spring you name it every wow. bit of it so um you know the 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 physical limit you know a glide and a 350 really internally aren't that much different and then the turbo 350 kind of morphed over to the you know the 700 and the 4l60 kind of guts wise but the the 700 and the 4L60, 70, 65, whatever, it, it, its weakest link ends up being the the third and fourth gear kind of basket of clutches, if you will, which Sonics makes a new part for that. It's great. And then the input shaft. It's a, The input shaft, let's say, is 12 inches, and then behind it, these, clutch, these clutches and basket are another 10 inches. Um, so it's kind of a, a funny design to really put horsepower to. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so, cause that's what, you know, I mean, and not just from the, from the 4L 60, 70, you know, perspective, um, just from an overall transmission perspective, I mean, it would seem to me like if it, like just from the guy with not a lot of knowledge about transmissions that if it mechanically doesn't break like parts, like if you just say, look, that mm-hmm. shaft diameter will never work because it's just too small. You know, like when they say that clutches, you know, fail, is it the diameter of the clutch doesn't have the capacity is the amount of clutches you can put in the pack. And it, this isn't just for the um, 4L60. It's probably anything. Yeah, for, for any of them. So uh, line pressure is your, your biggest friend with transmissions. If, uh, if you can crank the line pressure up, it's quicker on the shifts, it's better on clutches, it's faster apply and release on the trans brake, but it's also harder on hard parts, gears, input shafts, things like that. So you go ahead and make those out of ASCO and the best materials you can, and they don't break. So with a stock case, you're limited to how much line pressure you can put to something. That was that, that was definitely the, the tipping point on the 400, uh, you know, well after the glide, was the aftermarket case you the the biggest area that would break is second gear and and the lugs would blow off of the die cast case so when when we made ours i added five lugs to it and made them as big as we could so we run 300 pounds of line pressure um if you put you know let's say 250 pounds of line pressure to a 4l60e uh you're going it's it's going to want to blow the blow the case apart um, they have a lot of line pressure. I mean, we just had one on the dyno today. It's uh, we, we have with the shift kit and and uh, the con- the computer box, which that's that's a whole a whole nother topic is the tuning of the transmission, uh, much like you would tune your fuel injection, everything else. Um, and and it was 220 pounds of line pressure. Uh, cooler cooler pressure was 70 pounds, and it flowed three three point four gallons per minute. It's a it's a nice running unit that's going in somebody's 600 horsepower street rod uh and it didn't have all the the bells and whistles and everything else it was just uh kind of shift kit clutches billet pistons things like that so the the line pressure in the case is is the biggest part aside from the physical size Mm -hmm. of everything so you know the power glide case boom you can crank the line pressure up and uh you know you put more clamping force on clutches as everybody can kind of figure out the the better they hold the quicker they apply the quicker they release so on the on the 400 um when you when you applied a ton of pressure what was actually breaking was it breaking because of function of pressure or aggressiveness of shift 
So the the case itself, so it's a die cast. High, you know, all the high volume, everything is die cast because you can cast it very close to size with minimal machine work, uh, expensive tooling, but cheap parts, and they're close. So in the second gear area, which the 4L80s have as well, is uh, the a pressure plate and a snap ring go in that when you shift to second gear, actually the case in these lugs is actually holding the pressure. So when the pressure gets cranked up and the clutches try to snap on, they would blow the lugs out of the case. There's there's a million Turbo 400 cases with the lugs blown out. And that's where you know the aftermarket case, by adding the lugs and having a better material and having them thicker, that's where they hold up. Gotcha. And now that makes a little more sense because you're using the, the lug is essentially holding back the, the, yes. yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. I understand. It's, it's, it's integral to the case. Yep. Okay. So here's probably the question that everybody wants to know, where should you start to consider uh, an aftermarket case? We actually had that exact, you know, like a, a case from you guys, like, is there a point? Is it purely pressure based? Is it horsepower of what you need? Like, do you know the pressure needs to be X to handle Y horsepower? Is that how it's determined? Yeah. To a point, um, you know, we have some guys call that absolutely don't need the case, but they're like, I'm tired of dealing with this blanket, or I'm tired of dicking with this shield. It won't fit in my car with a shield on it. There you go. That's, uh, we, we get a good number of guy, guys with that, or, hey, I don't want a 35-year-old part with all these new internal pieces to go in my race car. End of story. Um, the the horsepower number is, it's the again, it's dependent on weight. Um, you can, you know, you can, you can have 2000 plus horsepower in a stock case, but it's not, if it's going to break, it's just when and which pass mm-hmm. it's gonna do it first round or in the final, um, the ability to turn the line pressure up with the aftermarket case really, uh, re- really allows you to the, the guys like, uh, the turbo cars, you see bump in really hard yep. uh, with the line pressure in the bump box. Um, you know, these guys that are mowing down a four tenths tree with a 940 inch motor, it, that, uh, that was kind of maybe an afterthought or a byproduct of turning up the line pressure. You're like, Oh, this thing is way quicker doing everything, uh, a- including the shifts and shift timing. So th- there's not really uh all right. Yeah. So if you call me and say I'm 3,500 pounds, I've got a big block and, uh, um, 2000 horsepower, and I'm going to be, you know, leaving off the brake and with a big tire, and and that's all I'm going to do is be hard on it. Then, yeah, we, we would we would much rather steer you into a, into an aftermarket case. The line pressure can go up, the clutches will last longer, the trans brake will be quicker for apply and release, and everything is just happier. Yeah, and it is a nice deal. Like people have even pointed out in the chat that you don't need a blanket mm-hmm. or a shield then, and that's mm-hmm. uh that's pretty sweet. I like the 904 in my Challenger. I dick with that shield. I can't tell you how many times you're just rushing around and you bolt that bitch in, and you're like, the frick, the shield's just sitting there on the ground. You're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> God. Yeah. That's got to suck. Um, it it absolutely sucks. But, you know, I mean, but at the same time, it's it's expensive. It's 1500 bucks for the case. Um, but I guess in the grand scheme of things, you know, one case failure and uh, it's paid for. Yeah, you junk all the parts, the good parts you put in a trans are probably a, a, yeah. a bunch of them. Well, if you're lucky enough not to crash the car yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Very fair point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know what? I got a question. So back to the 4065, uh, mm-hmm. I guess physically it's just smaller than the 80. Um, yep. But hypothetically, could we build one? Would you be confident, like if we called you and said, hey, we got this Corvette and we need a 60 done and it's got to last for 50 runs at about 1300 wheel and we have to drive it uh what a thousand miles uh, maybe we have to drive <laughs> it like a thousand miles also yeah you know there's there's a few people out there that that's kind of all they do they specialize in that stuff and um they would uh they, they would probably sell that to you in a heartbeat but that is not my specialty yeah i would um but what would i do it with all disclaimers up front saying, Hey, I don't have a damn clue if it's going to last that long. I'll do my best I can and we'll get it tuned and put every good part we can in there. Of, of course. Um, you know, but it's, uh, 
you know, if we're trans brake leaving and uh, and just being hard on on the track, you know, the the street driving is is no big deal. Um, you know, if we can do everything to help it, yeah. But it's um, it's not what I would put in my own car. Yeah, it's not, it's not what I what I would recommend, and it's it's probably not something if uh, if somebody called us and got a sales guy that that we would want to sell to you. Uh, whoever does sell it to you, get their cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a that's a perfect answer. And that that I mean, we're you know, it's kind of stupid. We keep going back to what we were thinking about. Yeah, but in the end, it's good information for everybody that's making a decision. Yeah. kind of like we are. Absolutely. Because if you were talking about uh, a Camaro, a Firebird, anything, they're all going to have a transmission. It's just a matter of if it's in the back of the car or the front of the car. Yeah. And when people are looking to do street cars. A lot of times, like for something like Drag Week, overdrive's kind of nice to have. Yep. and It is. You know, the we've been doing more and more of those. Um, and lately here, we've done a handful of these $20,000 Turbo 400s with a gear vendor on the back. Yeah, but in a Corvette, that, that can't be done. Yeah, it, uh, it doesn't <laughs> quite fit. Um, yeah. It, well, let, let me ask you. In, in a big car, it ends up with no drive shaft. So. Yeah, right. Well, and I brought that up too, because I I actually don't know the architecture of a Corvette that well, and Mike filled me in. But silly, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you another thing, which could help. Um, and Mike and I talked about this. What about lock up converters? And do you have something that you could lock up with a switch that could help us out if we put a four hundred in it, which apparently is pretty easy to do? Yeah, yeah, that that's that's a piece of cake. Um, you could. You can um, put a 4 L in there with a with a lock up on a switch if you wanted to. Um, so, but yeah, the the 400 is 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 simple. The you know it, there's some kind of safety issues there with, with a switch. Uh, you're running down the track, you flip a you know a regular toggle switch, you lock it up, you get into trouble, you lift, um, it's locked up. It's like not pushing in the clutch pedal. Yeah. So that that's the only thing. So we we kind of ask everybody when they're getting something like that to run it through a wide open throttle switch. So if you do lift, it unlocks. Yeah, makes sense to something me. Like that, but um, but I mean, yeah, I mean that that's how we run them on our dyno. We just have a button we push to uh, to run the lock up, and kind of the last test we do with all of them is we just sit there at idle and hit the lock up and make sure it shuts the the engine off on the dyno. Yeah, well, the only well then we'd have to have two switches because I'm talking about driving from track to track with a lock up. It'd make it a little bit better with the yeah. with not having overdrive. So then we'd have a wide open throttle. Also, um, I get what you I get what you mean. We would just have to have yeah, a, a, it's a, just, a. It's just safety. Issue. Yep. you don't want to pedal the car and have it locked up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would suck. Yeah. All right. Well, that's I mean that's a viable option too. I guess we could figure out how much tire we could put on it, what kind mm-hmm. of wood gear it has, and maybe we just do a 400 with a lock up converter. Well, something we can decide. Yeah. You know, how are we even going to do this? Because a car just sucks. Everything is a problem. Everything. Well, yeah. But but you have it. Yep. Yeah, I do. And it's yellow. Well, let, let's forget about us, and let's remember why we're here for the good listeners. Um, JC, guys had asked, uh, make a trans decision. Um, glide, 350 yeah. or 400. Um, okay. If you're looking for ET... Um, and, and I'm sure what this, the, the main thing is probably going to come down to is power and weight. And then a particular mm-hmm. trans is better suited. Yep. Um, it depends what you're doing. If we're heads up racing or bracket racing, uh, obviously it's, uh, we like to say, uh, a three speed will be number one qualifier, but it's usually a glide in the winter circle mm-hmm. of a bracket race. So that's definitely something to consider. Uh, if you want to bolt something in your 3,200 pound car and not worry about it for three or four seasons, then you go with a 400, uh, pretty much at, at any power level above 800 horsepower. It's, it's, uh, it's a piece of cake. Um, and it's, it's a pretty reasonable transmission. Uh, the glide, depending on the power somewhere around that 32 3300 pound mark uh we we like to start looking at some more gear ratio and getting into a three speed um the turbo 350 it's really not really it's just not popular for us uh let's say right now and this i was going to say i don't think it's real popular unless there's a lot of super stock guys using it because i 
There, there is. It, it is. It's popular in you know the fast kind of class cars that run stock and super stock. But um, how many of those are out there? There's, uh, there, there's not. You know, there's not thousands. There's thousands of, tens of thousands of just bracket racers. Sure. Guys go out every weekend and beat on their stuff. That, and, and they're either a Glide or or a, or a four hundred. And you know what? If you're a five hundred horsepower, twenty eight hundred pound car, you can. I mean. A turbo 350 will last like a 400. Um, but I've, and we say it around the shop, and I've never met a drag racer or anybody else that's into this stuff that says, ah, I got a little too much horsepower. I'm going to get rid of some. <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, you know, the natural natural progression. And we just had, had one in for an overhaul last week that was broke. You know, when, when he started life, he was just kind of a 500 horse um, big block. And, then he added a couple hundred shot of nitrous, and he got the motor redone. And before you know it, he was fourteen hundred horsepower, and stuff started to break. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's it, it's the question that kind of runs around. You know, just just bolting a three speed in won't necessarily make you faster unless your car is kind of under geared and underpowered and heavy for the glide. Mm-hmm. Um, the converter has to change, your tune-up has to change, your suspension has to change. You might have to take a little bit of starting line ratio out of it to make it hook. Uh, you might need to get rid of some torque and focus on horsepower, things like that. It, it's it's not just a drop-in deal unless you are severely heavy for the power glide and then go to a three-speed. The you know the other thing is uh, the the second gear, the two-speed 400, if if you will, and that really came about uh not not because it's stronger than the glide but because the gear ratio could be changed and is available to leave in second gear with a 148 or a 140 all all the way down to i think we can go to a 123 now um so that that and that really got popular with the small tire big horsepower guys um a uh, you know one sixty two or one fifty seven for the glide what wasn't enough I need a one forty eight I need a one forty one I need a one thirty four and that, that's where the the four hundred and the glide started to kind of you know get get mixed together um, and then the ratio drop was the next thing going going from a one forty to a one to one and not upsetting the car on the gear change was was really nice but. Now come full circle, and you can get a 160 low gear 400 with a 131 or a 126 second gear and one to one, and then you throw the lock up in the mix. And um, you know, guys like if anybody watched PDRA, Chris Reaney had a, a rough weekend, but he was number one qualifier and is now the the fastest true automatic and converter pro nitrous car at the 369.4. Holy God. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and the mile an hour wasn't there because he blew his hood scoop off uh, the day before. So it was only at 199. Wow. That's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Three, three. So that's, you know, that's a 400 with a 160 low gear. And uh, it's uh, the big, big internals, big input, big output, of course, and uh, and the lockup converter. All right. I, I got a, a question from a, a guy who just wrote in now. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ask you this way. Would you, would, would you feel confident building a turbo 350 that'll handle 700, um, flywheel horsepower in a 3,600 pound car? Uh, yeah. You know, if you threw all your good stuff at it. Yeah. As long as it's got some gear ratio, you know, it doesn't have a, uh, if it's a, a race car or something. Yeah. If it's a, a street car with a 273 or something rear gear, then I'd, probably try and steer away from it um but but yeah for for your regular drag guy sure what what kind of gear would you want like where where would your minimum be um you know like a 373 okay that that should have answered this straightable with a 28 inch tall tire and a fairly tight converter sure well you know what's know what this is all coming down to is that this is no different than building a motor you can't just pick up a catalog and say oh i want a trans there's really a lot more thought that goes into this and lord knows from the other conversation the converter side gets way more in depth yep yeah Yeah. well we got the right guy on the other end yeah that's for sure um another guy asked a question about trans cooling um this isn't on the on the chat this is a guy that wrote to me um on a transmission cooler 
does a bigger cooler help? And I know that's a stupid sounding question, no, but yeah, no, I understand. But what the guy is saying is he was under the impression that the transes don't move enough fluid to to cool, that it becomes a volume problem and not a trans cooler size problem. Um, but both both ways is right. Okay. Um, you know, so you put a deep pan on, it doesn't help cool anything, but it adds volume. So it takes that much, you know, it, it takes a lot longer to boil a big pot of water than a little one. So, you know, you add the volume to it, great. You do it with a bigger cooler, even better. Um, if you get a true radiator style cooler instead of a kind of tube and fin cooler, that that's a better piece. Um, if you can run synthetic fluid, it's worth about 20 degrees, uh, you know, more cooling, and it stays cooler longer uh, with a synthetic. You know, if, if you normally do five runs and it's 200 degrees with regular uh, petroleum fluid, then, you know, let's say you can make seven runs before it gets to 200 with the synthetic. Um, adding the volume helps. Uh, adding the capacity of the cooler helps as well. Uh, somewhere the, the 250 degree mark is where everything goes to shit. But, That's what I was just going to ask you. Like, where is the yeah, problem with yeah, transfluid? Yeah, yeah two two fifty. Um, you know, with the latest, greatest synthetic fluids and everything else, they can probably get a little bit warmer. But then all the solenoids and everything in the new transmissions go to shit. So, oh yeah, I forgot about um, that. Everything in there is in a in a bath of oil, and it's all electric. And it's plastic. Yeah, it's all plastic, and you know, again, made by the the cheapest quote they could get. So, but. You know, we we build these transmissions. I look at these things, and and they go out the door, and I'm like, damn, you know, somebody like like GM can build a million of these things and warranty them for a hundred thousand miles behind a freaking dually. Yeah, you know, it, uh, it 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 honestly blows my mind that 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 kind of stuff. Well, the, the, you know, we've always said it is a pretty smart collection of people that do that stuff. They, they yeah, they don't expect us to do what we do, and especially you do what you do. Uh, right, but out of the gate, it's a pretty damn hefty part. But then, but then you get that guy that maybe designed the the six speed, and you tell him, "Well, you know, I'm I'm putting three thousand horsepower to an OEM five pinion two forty eight turbo four hundred gear set," and he's just dumbfounded. <laughs> like, yeah, it'll like, go one foot. Yeah, <laughs> That'll yeah. be it. Right. It's uh, but uh, honestly, a a four L eighty five E five pinion steel gear set holds a lot of horsepower hmm. I mean, um, dealer, it's it's a thousand bucks from the dealer and if you're light we're talking you know somewhere around three thousand horsepower wow if right. you're heavy somewhere around two thousand and i'm sure they never intended that yeah not, not so much but <laughs> uh these guys i mean look, look at the 10 speed you know that's coming out in the raptor and and the zl1 it's just um it just ran around uh, Nuremberg today, and it's two seconds faster than than last year's car. But um, I've been really trying to get up to speed on that transmission. It's just it's such a cool feat of engineering that uh, you know I, I look at what we do and I'm like, damn, that thing's complicated. Then you look at that and you're just like, holy shit, it's it's like might as well be the space shuttle. We'll we'll talk about that in a second because that is pretty crazy. Because I know I I watched something. They kind of taught me about how that shit worked, and I actually told Jeff. I said, "You might want to go watch this because it gets pretty crazy. Things on, things off. This back. I mean, it's nuts." Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but I was I was reminded by a text message that I'm an idiot because the question about volume that he was asking was not volume of capacity. He was asking volume oh, of flow. flow. Yeah. Flow. So um, we talked about that a second ago. An OEM Turbo 400 uh, with the bushing correct and everything else and the converter you know with the, the converter is a function of flow as well if the stator stator's not milled and the caps aren't right it will restrict the flow but let's say everything is there uh you're moving four and a half gallons per minute so i think you got plenty of of flow there uh, an oem style glides three gallons per minute i i uh i don't know what these new transmissions flow but um that that 4L65 today was was a little over three gallons a minute. That's you know that that that's so every 60 seconds it's going full circle with, with the fluid. Um, so I I don't know you know what uh, what your listener thinks is 
is high or low, but um, I feel like that's that's a good amount of flow. You know, these guys, like when Chris makes a pass and he leaves the starting line and goes down the track, let's just say it's 180 degrees on the transmission, it it doesn't, you know, in that four-second run, it really doesn't get hot. It made a lot of heat, but it hasn't had time to fill the pan up and get hot and circulate back through and come back down in four seconds. Uh, where he gets his highest temp is when he turns off the end of the track. You know, everything's kind of settled back down. So, But if you're continuously running a transmission, you're driving on the street or, you know, a 10-second car, and then you're driving back, you, you've, got a, you've got a good amount of flow. Yep. As far, far as I'm concerned. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, we got a guy that asked, and uh, uh, I've, I, I, I've heard this before, but he wants an explanation for what it means to blow through the converter. Um. So you can take your gear ratio, tire size, and trap RPM, and it, it's math, so it's pretty much, you know, you can't argue about it. And let's say, you know, for whatever the numbers are, 150 mile an hour and your 429 and your 30 inch tall tire, you should be at 7,500 RPM if, yep. if you had a clutch in the car and it was dead locked up. Well, you're going through at 8,300 RPM, you are blowing through the converter. And it's really just, you know, for me, it's too much slip. Um, slip in the converter, the converter is not tight enough, it's not efficient enough to get you to the other end. Um, we are talking about transmission, so some of that can come from, you know, not enough flow in the transmission, the pump going away, you know, cooler lines going away, things like that. So th- there's different things that can th- that can predicate that that problem, but uh, really just too loose of a converter for your combination is blowing through the converter. It makes a bunch of heat, slows you down, and it just sucks. And the multiplication side actually changes when that happens, correct? Like yeah, yeah. Loose converters don't don't multiply torque as much as a correct or efficient converter. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mike, what? Come on, you never run out of... Th- I can't even look at you. I really can't. <laughs> Those freaky fucking eyes, man. Um, JC might not even know what you what, what you got going on here. Maybe you want to clue him in so he thinks you're a retard like we do. Yeah, I, I got black contact lenses just because they were they were free. They sent them to me. I, I mean, look. For they, Halloween. It, it is funny, but it's freaky. I just... It, see, I'm a goof. Week early. Yeah, I know it's a week early, but that that makes it even better if you a TV show. Yeah, but if you, <laughs> right. but if you put them in for Halloween, everybody expects it to be like, oh, look at this jackass. You walk into the store like this, and they're like, oh god, you know, this guy's a zombie. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I don't, uh, I'm a mess. No, they right. still think, look at this jackass. Yeah, that's funny, Todd. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so now a guy asked about the transmission side that we talked about this um, that they're doing things with pump flow to change how the converter works. And we talked about that in the converter episode. Um, it is yeah, like a the cooler pressure dump. Yeah. And things like that. Is there anything special that has to be done with the trans to handle that type of usage? Well, I mean, not so much the usage again, uh, education and depending on how you're doing it, uh, you know, the guys that are tuned up on it, it's all kind of computer controlled. You don't do anything. Uh, we've done them for guys that, uh, you know, want to drive on the street. And then when they get to the racetrack, they want to spool up and leave it 12 pounds of boost. So they have a simple button they push and hold and it dumps cooler pressure. If they go brain dead and hold it for 15 seconds, it dumps all the flow and all of the fluid out of the converter and melts everything. <laughs> so yeah, th- there's different ways to do it. Um, you know, the turbo, the turbo 400 is a little bit tougher to do than the glide. Uh, the glide, you can do it all internally very easily with some solenoids that just, uh, you run a loop line and it goes through solenoids that either dump the charge pressure going back to the torque converter or let it all go through. The 400 is a little different. Um, it's easy to do it externally. Um, it's harder to do it internally, but you can do it both ways. And, uh, you know, it, it mainly, not mainly, it's, it's only turbo guys that, that need it to uh, to help spool to get to their boost. But then the guys that, that do need it and do use it are, you know, they don't really have to get to very much boost anyway because mm-hmm. um, they're such, you know, high horsepower cars. But 
then there's a little bit of being able to manipulate it down track, which uh, NHRA actually put in a rule that you're not allowed to do that other than on the starting line. You can't uh, manipulate converter charge pressure anywhere but at the starting line. Um, But guys use it to, you know, make a converter. So NHRA, you're also pro mod. You're not allowed to run a lockup torque converter. Uh, with your setup, you have to have a non lockup. So these guys oh. are trying to dump all the cooler pressure down low and then pound it all back in up top um, to the point where I personally feel like it's not safe because you're you've got a big converter with 150 pounds of pressure inside of it trying to explode. Um, but all that's just because they don't they, they don't allow the lockup. Yeah, so they get they get the converter to work like they want. And then just yeah, jam it full of pressure, pressure to pull the stall down as close to the lock as they could. Yep, and then crank it all back in. But the inherent problem with that is uh, working hand in hand is cooler pressure versus flow. As you increase your cooler pressure, you decrease your flow mm-hmm. every time. Flow and volume. De- yep. Yeah. W- when you decrease your flow, um, you end up at a point where you might starve the converter at the top end and actually run out of fluid. And then it's just like you push the clutch pedal in and, and it lets go. So it's kind of, you know, you can't just take the thing and, and throw some solenoids on it and say, all right, this is, I'm going to dump it all here and restrict it all up there and go, go A to B. Um, it's, you know, it, it's like the rest of the stuff. All of it just gets so damn complicated to make it all work together. It's, um, it, it, it's another way to tune, but it's, it's really it's reserved for your quote unquote more professional guys that 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 are out you know putting over hundred runs on a pro mod every every year you know hey so just I put on my stalker just in case somebody doesn't understand what we're talking about just a short version of it is so they run a tight converter they reduce the pressure to the converter or take some fluid out of it so it'll flash higher when they yeah, get get you off the starting right line. right. Yep. And yep. then it reverts back to as tight as it was, and in cases Which, they tried to overload it and even tighten it more. Which goes back to the, the guy's question about blowing through the converter. If they left all the, the cooler pressure out of it, they would blow through it, and your coupling and your efficiency goes away. So the, you know you want to try and get your non-lockup converter as close to locked up as you can at the top of the track for ETM mile an hour. Mm-hmm. Great information. But, yeah, all makes sense. We just had a guy say you're you're definitely his favorite guest, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, Send him flowers. I'll give you. Yeah. He'll give you ATI's address. Send him a nice yeah, bouquet. Just send him to my wife. It was just her birthday. Oh, happy there birthday! That, yep, that'd be perfect. We have an anniversary coming up too, so it's it's perfect. Which one? Three, I think. Oh Not man. Short. Yeah, we have kids twice that age, so we started with the kids and then went on to marriage. That's all right. You just do it how you yeah. do it. Yeah, so you know what? My grandma's 94 and she was all right with it. So I figured eh, we're good. Yeah, if if 94 year old grandma's all right with it, then. Yeah, you would think she wouldn't be the most tolerant. No. <laughs> just just right. my thought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's good and, stuff, uh, actually. I'm, I'm pretty sure my little guy, he's he's three and a half, out there, out there listening. So he is, uh, I am positive if Chris Reaney said, James, I'd like to take you home and be your new daddy, he would just be gone and never see me. <laughs> <laughs> He has uh, he has a multitude of Chris Rini T-shirts. He would prefer to wear one all day, every day, and he cries whenever Chris loses. Um, he cries if Chris doesn't win a test session or anything else. <laughs> Damn, uh, serious? He, yeah, oh man, he he's all about it. He um, yeah. when he when we actually get to the track and he's near Chris, he gets all quiet and shy. And I'm like, but then he's he's Charlie Buck's little buddy when we're at the racetrack, and uh, he cruises around with him on on the golf carts. Chris is an uh, engine builder. Yeah, but wait a minute, time out. Does Chris have a backhoe? No, I don't, I don't think he does. Because ha- haven't I seen a picture of 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 he, him? He was yeah. on the dozer. That's right. That's right. I mean, that's got to that's got to be worth something. No. Right. Right. He's uh, he might be three and a half, but he is he's driven and or moved a lot of things. Yeah. So. Well. I would give Chris a weekend, and he'd be he'd be wanting Dad back. I guarantee it. I got to tell you those those exact memories that JC's explaining. Like I remember, and it's amazing. I, I how old could I have possibly been? I'm trying to think which track it was, but I remember my brother, who was a little little kid, 
that like my mom wouldn't take her eye off him because he was a little little kid. Mm-hmm. And we were going to some trailer that had like was giving out hard candies. And I remember this stuff and I remember the drivers talking to us. I mean, all that stuff really really shapes your interaction. Yeah, so that's good stuff. Yeah. yeah, very good stuff. Yeah, no, it, it, it's really cool. He, he's definitely a fan, and uh, it, it's neat seeing the, the kids out there. You know what I mean? That That's our future our future customers, racers, fans, everybody. So it, it's important. And uh, it, it's you, know, you don't see a lot of young guys or, or even kids in the kind of NHRA bracket ish racing you know division one national events things like that but you see a ton of them with the copos and all the new cars coming out you see guys that are interested in it again and then you see them you know of course at at, you know yellow bullet ducks race all the all the small tire heads up races it's it's just cool and there's cars they can relate to and and uh it's it's a fun event and you know it's a nice environment too it's it's not you know yes it's loud and and everything else but it's it's a friendly environment and we need it for our future we've uh, got to have it absolutely yeah absolutely do the, the kids they don't get like like we have a, a community college in virginia listening and mm-hmm. you know like kids today we grew up looking at cars period it was like ingrained it's what we yeah. did everything from bicycles when we were a kid to something with a motor it just it just progressed they look at phones now they're yeah there's so much distraction that you know it, it's becoming a very strange place hey i gotta throw one more quote sorry man yeah. Okay, well, r- real quick, the community college thing is uh, we struggle to find anybody that uh, you know, that that can run a lathe, can run a mill. I mean, I mean hell, just wants to work for for really. Um, but CNC operators, CNC uh, programmers, that's the biggest thing right now is finding somebody that can take a 3D print from AutoCAD and, and actually make a part on a CNC machine. Nearly impossible to find. Yep, yep. And you... And, and, it's not, it's not, it doesn't seem to be getting better. And, and they can make a good living at it. And you know what you could do? You could take some yellow tape and put it around the machine and right on the perimeter where they're standing, safe space, and then you'll have a lot of applicants. <laughs> It'll yeah. be perfect. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There'll be no hurt feelings. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> There's no safe space in the machine shop. Hey, I got, I got one more question because we got a guy, we got some, a bunch of guys, but one particular guy from Australia that listens all the time, and, and I would feel bad if I didn't answer, ask his question. Okay. Um, he just wants to know it's easy. What what do you prefer for hose or line for for a transmission cooler? Um, something that's Teflon on, on the inside. You know what? There's not a lot of pressure, so you don't need some crazy expensive stuff. Uh, you know, it can be screw on ends, but something that's Teflon coated, so the uh, you know whatever fluid you're running won't uh, won't break it down. You know, your regular rubber kind of vacuum hose, stay away from it. Um, but you can definitely, you know, jump on Summit or Jags or whatever and, and find some, uh, some, you know, specifically for the petroleum fluids. So it won't go away. Uh, you, want, you don't want something cheap either. So if you go around a bend, it doesn't try to kink. Uh, it doesn't have vacuum. Just, you know, those pressures we talked about. Figure your regular Turbo 350, Paraglide 400, you're going to have on average 50 pounds of pressure. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So the Teflon stuff yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah. Any, anything is Teflon lined or whatever some of that EPDM crap is. Um, th- that kind of stuff that's just made for for that environment. Because um, you don't you don't want it to break down. It's yeah. The, the rubber itself won't really hurt anything, but it'll get stuck in the valve body, and then it'll screw everything up. All right, cool. Well, he said thank you, and we appreciate it. Yeah, we we do a lot of business down there in New Zealand and Australia. Yeah, they are nuts. Like you look at the yeah. webpage, they're really car guys. Yeah, they're, they're really there's really guys. a good, yeah. good, yeah. good group over there. Some awesome stuff down there. Yep, no doubt. All right. Well, uh, I mean, uh, we got everything and more that that we expected from you as usual. Uh, we could probably go another hour, but it's kind of that time. So, uh, yeah. why don't you uh, plug your plug your deal and uh, have at it? Uh, ATIRacing.com or see us on Facebook. Uh, I try to keep up with everything there, and you know, we'll just uh, we're going to be moving in the next uh, in the next few months into our bigger building, so it'll be a little bit of chaos, but uh, we're we're looking forward to it for sure. And uh, we've got SEMA and PRI coming up as well, so if anybody's out there, stop by. We'll have our our cutaways and uh, our new 4L85E cutaway out there, and and everything else we do: dampers, converters, transmissions, parts, pieces, you name it, and we make it all in Baltimore. 
Thanks, man. Cool. And I'll see you in Vegas. You know. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. You Thanks. too, JC. Right, Thanks buddy. again. Always informative and always a pleasure to have you. Anytime. Take All care. Right. See you. Bye. Damn, he's a great guy. Sure is. More information. He's sure he's really just he's just a. Uh, I know I always say it and I sound like a dork, but he's just no. He is a he is a, a great guy. Nice, good guy. Yeah, for, for sure. And I'll go see him out there in Vegas, and uh, you know, it's, it's just great that he comes on and he's so friggin' smart. And everybody that listens, if you need trans stuff, they are the guys. You know, and I don't believe you don't know who Chris Rennie is. <laughs> I can't look at you, man. <laughs> Black pupil stare, stare. I got scared right now. No, he, uh, Chris is a, uh, you know, he's a, a, a pro boost guy. I think it's pro. I, I don't know. I don't know the class, but That's his car, I'm- his car flies. But one of his claims to fame, yeah, is he was on the airplane that Sully landed in the Hudson River. Ooh, was he really? He fucking a was. Nope. That's yeah. badass. That is badass. Because <laughs> that you know. <laughs> That's, I don't even know what to say about that. I know. It's, and stop looking at me. That's, <laughs> <laughs> just fucking say anything. Yeah, that is pretty badass. Because, I mean, you, you got to know in that minute that you're crashing. You're yeah. like, that's it. Dead. Thinking about whatever goes to your, and then the guy lands it. He might not He might not have cared. I mean, he's got a pretty big sack to do what he does. Yeah, when he's holding the steering wheel. That's true. Yeah. All right. Little, well, different. little different. Somebody else holding it. Yeah. Yeah. He, little different. I'm going to go with he was all right. Well. That said pro nitrous. Okay. Yeah, uh, pro nitrous is. The, I, I, the, the problem is, like I said, I follow kind of the stuff I follow. I know, like, dude. I was busting your pants. I know. But like you said it, I'm like mouth in the tongue. I'm like, who? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't have to say that on the air. <laughs> well, I don't care. I mean, everybody knows I'm half a retard. I saw electronics. I don't know anything. <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> That's about it. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed it. That that was that was good stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's uh he's always a great guest. Always loved to have him back. You know what I'd like to talk about a little more with him is the the super stock side of things. He'll be back on. Yeah, I know he will. I know yeah, I don't want anybody to ever think that, okay, well we did three parts of him, so now he's gone. You no know, put in a dungeon. It now, starts over now. Yep, he'll be back. All right. Well we'll be back next week, maybe. Well, I'm not gonna be here. I'm gonna be in Vegas. Maybe call in from out there. Yeah. Uh, I can do that, but we'll see. We'll figure it out. Yeah. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.